Well, very simple. Think of a top, a uh, spinning top. Uh, let's take an atom, for example, and have it spin. And it can spin this way, let's say, hypothetically, or spin this way. It could be one or zero. So you can simulate a digital computer with zeros and one just by spinning top. But real tops, of course, spin at all sorts of angles. They can spin this way, they can wobble, they can go upside down. So how many modes are there in a spinning top that can rotate like this? Infinite number. Right. Not just zeros and one, but an infinite number of possible vibrations just on a spinning top. That is the power of quantum computers. Quantum computers compute not on zeros and ones, but they compute on all possible orientations of an atom. And how many orientations are there? Infinite number. Now, what can you do with this? Let's say I put a mouse in a maze, okay? And at each joint, the, each juncture, the mouse has to go left or right, left or right, because it's in a maze. So how long does it take for the mouse to go through the maze on a computer? It takes a fair amount of time, because each mm. time it hits a joint juncture, it can go to the left or the right, left to the right. It's tedious to calculate all possible orientations. A quantum computer does everything all at once. Every single possibility laid out for you all at once. So how much more powerful is the quantum computer compared to an ordinary computer? It is infinitely more powerful than an ordinary computer. It could solve problems that a digital computer would take an infinite amount of time to solve. And it can do it in a matter of seconds to minutes, depends on the uh, on the computer, of course. And why? Because how many calculation modes are there in a quantum computer? Zeros and ones? No, infinite number. 